Become a professional American Red Cross certified lifeguard today. You must be at least 15 years of age. Be able to swim 500 yards nonstop. Retrieve a 10 pound weight from the bottom of a pool and pass a written test. Lifeguard training classes are signing up right now. For more information, call 664-3018. That's 664-3018. in the Cleveland Mini Football League. We've gone through a whole series of championship games and we're gonna start with the Pee Wee Division. Again, these young people are from the ages of 10 and 11 years old, John, and we can expect some excitement today. Yeah, Tim, we have the best of the best of the Pee Wee Division, 10 and 11 year olds, a lot of uh, offense, a lot of uh, talented players. And let's not forget, that's not the only reason why these kids are here playing this game today. They are good citizens, good students, and along with being great athletes, they deserve this opportunity. Well, right now, we're going to go over to Joe Wise for starting of our national anthem. Joe? Welcome to Collinwood Athletic Complex for today's 2018 Pee Wee All-Star Game. The American All-Stars in Navy, the National All-Stars in White. Would everyone please rise for the playing of our national anthem. for the West Side Wolverine cheerleading team presenting the nation's colors. Well, as you can see, folks, they are ready to go. They'll shake hands and be started momentarily here, but first we're gonna take a look at the officials that'll call today's game. They are all certified through the Ohio High School Athletic Association, and it starts with our head referee, on the left, Ralph King, 31 years as an official, a 1976 graduate of Shaw, currently works for the City of Cleveland Rec Department. In the middle, it is Bryant Reynolds, four years official, 1988 graduate of East Tech, currently works at ZWR Chemical. 
And on the right, a former Muni football player as well, seven years as an official, 2004 graduate of St. Edward High School and currently works at F Buddy Contractors. But John, they're gonna deal with some special rules when it comes to all-star play. Yep, we got uh, eight minute quarters, 10, four timeouts per game. There'll be no kickoffs and there'll be no punts. The scoring is conventional, touchdown six points, safeties two points, and then the ball will be placed at the midfield. Extra points if kicked is two points, and run or pass is just one point. Now the mandatory play rules are there's 11 different offensive players, 11 different defensive players. They switch roles after the first quarter. Second half is the coach's decision. They can substitute as they like. There'll be no blitzing. No blitzing for the safety of the players. Defensive line may have to, uh, no more than the five players on the defensive line. No more than five players on the defensive line. And again, there'll be no punt, so the automatic punt rule is in effect, which means the ball will be advanced. Uh, 20 yards, the clock will resume at the snap after 15 second runoff, and we must, and it must be outside the 30 yard line. And the coaches that are volunteering again is Coaches that play, they coach throughout the season. They were selected as all-star coaches. And again, they got a tough job. They've had these kids for about maybe four or five practices to try to assemble them, get them together. And, and you know, John, being an all-star coach, you've been there before, everybody's a quarterback. You know, <laughs> you got to find somebody to do the block. And that's a challenge in itself. Yeah, it is, Tim. But, you know, this year, it's been made a lot simpler because of the uh, the weight limit restrictions being lifted off of all the divisions. So linemen know that they're linemen, receivers know that they're receivers, running backs know that they're running backs, and quarterbacks, they will uh, alternate that position depending on how the flow of the game goes. But let's not be surprised if the coaches do fulfill some of the big guys' dreams and give them the football. And again, when, you, when you're talking about peewees, a lot of them will be back for another year. Again, as you mentioned in the beginning, these young kids are excited. They're not only selected on athletic ability, they're selected on their citizenship and things that they've done all season long. And I'm sure when you're looking at these kind of all-star, these are kids that were probably the most dependable, always there at practice. And uh, our hat's off to them. They'll all receive a program today also besides playing in this All-Star game. That'll be a memorandum that they can have for the rest of their life showing that they were a league All-Star. And believe it or not, Jen, I get calls all the time <laughs> where people say, please send me this program. They don't believe I played in this All-Star game. You know, get me the video of the game. Yeah, and uh, these are memories, Tim, that will last, will last a lifetime. I also want to thank the parents for picking them up and dropping them off on time and uh we like to thank the coaches for volunteering their time coming out to coach this game like tim mentioned it's a tough task with the limited amount of prices to get everybody on the same page but these kids are smart as they as we do check grades to make sure they're eligible to play in this football game football is just a hook folks all around citizenship and just being a good person a good student athlete those are the most important things that muni aspounds to So person comes set. Got some motion. Wow. First play of the game. Read it real quick. And the defense was there on the tackle. Looked like number 10. 21. Well, 20. 31. 31. Okay. Number 31 on the tackle. Marlene Redmond, young man from the PAL 6 Red Dogs. All right, Malene. It's a big boy right there. Check him out. Again, Malene Red Redman, a fifth grader out of Willoughby, honor roll student, and a Cleveland Browns fan. Yeah, he's got something to cheer about this year. They're getting better. Step by step. Second down, we'll call it 11. Immediately get to the quarterback and again in there on the tackle. 
tough little player. I'm trying to get his number here. It looks like 31 again. Yeah, Redmond, once again, red to play. He's getting good penetration on that side of the ball, Tim. And uh, he's coming out here 100 miles an hour. He's fired up to play today. So third down, we'll call it right now. It looks like about 16. And there you look at the young man from the PAL 6 Red Dogs. They practice over at Luke Easter Park. Handoff, cut it up the middle. He's got a room, John. 40, Go. 50, brought down, but a first down for the National All-Stars. Number 10. It's a good job right here by the offensive line, just staying engaged with their blocks and he's picking his holes, doing a good job getting it upfield. And People might be familiar with that name. That's uh, Roger Gilchrist from the uh, from the championship game in the Pee Wee Division. Third leading scorer in the league with 74 points. Honor roll student over at Mary Queen of Peace. He's going to be something to see, John. Yeah, he is. He is. We got a bright future, and I'm just happy to know that we're going to have him a couple more years in Muni football. He's got great parent support. I know the father well, Cleveland policeman. Handoff. Nothing doing there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. We'll call it second down and 10. Well, you can tell right off the bat, this game is going to be one in the trenches. You look at that defensive line right there. Number 27 from the George Monroe All-Stars, player that uh, laying the hammer down that time. Second down, we'll call it 11. 5.14 to go. It is a chilly day. We've had rain most of the day, in and out. Game time temperature, they told me it was 47. For me, I'll take it down to about 42 because it seems colder than that. No wind, though. That'll help us. Sure will. Marquise Davis on that, that last tackle. Going to try to cut it up to the middle. He, he hit right there at the line of scrimmage. Might have picked up one. That's Redmond once again getting good penetration, kind of disrupting that blocking scheme. Also, Davis in there too, once again. Made him hesitate a little bit. You see right there, 27, he's chasing him from behind, but right there, you see Redmond gets his legs out from underneath him and they take him down. Again, that was Terry Eaton from Charles Mooney, a fifth grader. Third down, we'll call it 11. Big Make down 10. here. Oh, win it again, give it to the playmaker. And try to get it outside. Wow! And he broke one tackle. Now, did he get enough for the first down? Uh, we're looking at a fourth down, I believe, but it's going to be short. A couple yards. Yeah, you can see definitely a short here. See the referee put his fist up for fourth down. I think they're going to go for it, Tim. Oh, heck yeah. Fourth down, three, maybe four. There'll be a lot of going for it on fourth down today. There's a nice, strong run. Yeah, that was Gilchrist once again. <laughs> Running like his idol, Saquon Barkley. And a lot of you viewers at home say, well, they're running the ball. Let's bring them up. Well, they got restrictions. They're only allowed to have five down on the line. So those linebackers got to come up hard. Find a crease. He's and not he gonna gets get hit, it. and he's not going to get there. 37 on the hit, John. Excellent job by Dharma. Damon Dharma of the Ohio Cardinals. Come on, D. Come on, D. 
So the American All-Stars will go on offense for the first time. We'll look at it right here. Uh, he's reading his blockers a little bit, but just an excellent job. Also in there, number, it's like number 32. In there too. There's Janelle George from Sims Raiders. Laying the hammer down. They had a pretty good year at that. The Sims Raiders. Our hats off to them as our 2018 Pee Wee League champions. Yeah, we called his name quite a bit on that Saturday afternoon. So, folks, we want to remind you that as we go through today, we'll be passing on some great information. Uh, free pro. He broke oh, one tackle, goodness. broke another tackle. 40. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Touchdown. The American All-Stars are on the board. It was on the heart and the legs of number 21, Justin Latman, the second leading scorer in the league from the Sims Raiders. Yeah, Justin picking up right where he left off in the championship game as he was the offensive MVP. Running for, well, almost 200 yards, and I believe he had about three touchdowns. Just a great talent. Going to have a lot of fun watching him play for the next few years as well. So they'll go for the extra point. Low snap. Uh oh. Still fighting for still it. Fight. Oh my, he's he got in. in. Wow, what determination. Again, number two from the American All Stars with the extra point, Elijah Gray from the Northeast Ohio Saints. He didn't have a whole lot of help by the offensive line, but his grit and determination. Looked like he was a little hesitant right there, but it's one, two, three, four. Big fella tried to catch him instead of laying the boom on him, and he was able to fall forward to get in the end zone. So the early lead of 7 nothing goes to the American All-Stars. And yeah, American All-Stars are full of firepower, Tim. You look up and down this roster, you got the first leading scorer, the fifth, the sixth, the second leading scorer. Uh, Elijah Gray is the sixth leading scorer in the league. Uh, honor roll, attendance, citizenship. He plays basketball. He plays baseball. Loves Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. And he loves to play video games. So a timeout on the field. And it looks like the National All-Stars are ready. We do want to remind you that at halftime, the league director, Jason Dunn, will be here for a very special presentation. So first down and 10. And right there, that defensive line has really done a number. Number 32 again, Janelle George from Sims Raiders. Yeah, Janelle George, Tim Ming, Redmond. Those guys, uh, they really came to play today. They're just coming off the football, looking for the ball. Wow, that was fast. Well, again, this is the end of the first quarter. And again, you're looking at the Pee Wee American All-Stars and their coaches. They lead 7-0. We do want to remind you as we go into the month of December, as we know the chilly weather is here, it means it's time to go inside for hoops. Again, boys and girls basketball teams are now signing up at all your local recreation centers Please pick up the phone right now and contact your local rec centers. 
They have peewee programs from the ages of five all the way up through 17 years of age, boys and girls. And again, they'll start out with leagues at their rec centers and then they'll go on into what we call March Madness time where they'll, they'll fill the TV tube with March Madness tournaments through all the recreation centers. Again, the young ladies will be playing a regular league that'll begin in early January, so they'll start forming their teams. If you have any questions regarding girls basketball or the boys basketball, pick up the phone right now and call 664-2014. That's 664-2014. And what a great program for the boys and girls in the city of Cleveland. Get home and get your homework done and get to the rec center, get a meal and play some basketball. Second down, 12. Look to get to the outside, and he's met head on by number 27. Yeah, from the George Monroe All Stars, Marquise Davis. Yeah, you take a look at Marquise. He's just doing, doing his thing, skating down the line of scrimmage, not giving an inch, and big penetration to bring him down. He also had help right there from number eight, Jameer Mason Owens. Take a look at Marquise Davis, George Moreau All-Star. Fifth leading scorer in the league, honor roll. Loves the Steelers and Antonio Brown. So, John, even though we're in December, how was your Thanksgiving? Did you have a nice meal? Everything go well with the family? I'm still full, Tim. I'm telling I'm you. I'm still full. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Family, friends, football, I'm happy. I know one thing, John Bufford enjoyed his Thanksgiving meal. He's here, all ready to go now. They got to get the ball to Gilchrist. Looking to throw. throw. Oh! Accepted, almost, no. Almost. He had it in his hands, John. Yeah, he did. Number 33, Randall Henry read that play perfectly. Didn't let the man get behind him. And came up on the football, just couldn't get his balance. Not a very good throw. The ball is really up for grabs and just went right through his right through his arms. He'll remember that for a long time. You take a look at it from this angle. See the ball just goes right through his arms and he'll get a little tease and a little rubbing from his friends and family members, but great effort there. John, they, they use the automatic punt rule. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing right now? Yeah, the ball is going to be advanced by the American team. I'm excuse me, the national team advanced it 20 yards, which will put it right at the 44 yard line of the nationals. As they go into the 50 yard area to get into the to scoring position and 15 seconds will be uh, run off the clock during the exchange. And so, they'll, so they'll take, take over 15 seconds off the clock here in that exchange. Mm -hmm. It's really done wonders for us, Tim, this year with injuries being way down, uh, eliminating uh, the punt and putting in the, the mandatory no punt rule. No shuffle pass. Wow. He planted him in the ground. I'll tell you what, number nine. That was vicious. Jarrell Melton from Slavic Village Bears. Yeah, a little, little touch pass right there. Try to get him some running room. He's lucky he's just taking his time there, trying to size up number 18 to see if he can get around him. Demetrius Harper, who did an excellent job of keeping contained and slowing him down until the rest of the posse came with a nice vicious tackle. Second down and six. We'll call it second and seven. Handoff to the outside. Lot of room, could be. That's the angle. That was a touchdown saving tackle there, right there. Yeah, look nice like run too. Number 18 once again. 
able to get the tackle. Again, that ball carrier was number six, Lamir McKenzie from Sims Raiders. Yeah, Demetrius Harper laid the boom on him right here. Good tackle. Nice job. Yeah, good tackle. He spent a lot of time teaching the coaches on the proper technique with tackling this year before the season. John, you were part of all those trainings that they go through. Yeah, we had real good sessions out at the Cleveland Browns facility, one of our wonderful sponsors uh, who teaches heads up football to increase the safety of the players and eliminate injuries. And you can see it right there on that play, how he was taken down, head up, across the, across the stomach, wrapped him up, and took him to the ground. You can see different ball carriers now in the backfield for both teams as the first quarter as it came to an end. We're now in the second quarter, they switch roles for the players. So you got some fresh legs out there. And you see number two again, Elijah Gray carrying, uh, excuse me, number two, Keyshawn Williams carrying the ball for the Nationals. Excuse so we got a, a timeout here on the field. Elijah Gray, I'm sorry, Elijah Gray was carrying the ball. Go in the huddle here, and here's what the here what those coaches are telling the kids. You're looking at the national, and here's the American. You not go through. Two steps, block your man. Keep them off your quarterback. Fast block, fast block. Very thirty-eight, very thirty-six. Very thirty-six. East green, no one. I don't know if people realize how smart these kids have to be in order to pick up. The offensive plays, the offensive uh, philosophy in such a short period of time. These are you know, some of the brightest student athletes we have in the, in the city of Cleveland and Cuyahoga County as we do have some kids who live outside the city of Cleveland. But they, uh, they look pretty smooth here. We haven't had one penalty. So I hope I didn't jinx them. But it's been a, big, a good, clean uh, football game with the Nationals. Excuse me, the Americans pretty much dominating on the ground. And on defense with that that defensive line getting a lot of penetration. Long way to go though. Low snap. Oh! First mistake of the game. No. Yeah. Who jinxed that? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Well, the rains come, so that's probably adding a little bit to the fumbles now. Yeah, and, it, and the ball's a little slippery, but, you know, instead of taking his time and picking it up, Jan German was right there to pick it up. Good job by Jan of the West Side Wolverines. His coordinator over there, Damon Johnson. So they'll take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. I think they got to get the ball to Gilchrist. He's a, he's a big play guy. And he can get to that second level real quick and make something special happen. Got a little confusion right here. 5.09 to go in the half. Looks like they're going to have to. We're at Collinwood Field looking at Pee Wee, Muni football all-star players. A quick hitter right behind the left tackle. That's what I like seeing, man. Short blocking. Yeah. Hit it quick. Second down. We'll call it about five. Second and five. Yeah, Jamir Mason Owens on that tackle. Sunbeam, sixth grader. Air roll, attendance, good citizenship. He's a Steelers fan, Tim. I tell you what. Can't win them all. No, hey, I'm all right. You know, I remember when the kids came to get their pictures, one mom, when the kid said he wanted to be a Steelers fan, mom didn't want him to put it down. I said, let him put it down. It's him. That's okay. John Buffer's a Steelers fan. What the heck? Oh, he's going the wrong way. There's Jamir Miller, uh, Jamir Mason Owens again. J.M.O. Coach, north and south. J. 
JMO on the tackle. He's giving him nowhere to go. Redmond chasing as usual. Davis right there to clean him up in case he got away. It's been an excellent job by this American team defense. So third down, it looks like about 12. Again next week, John and I will be right back here for the Midget All-Star Game. That's kids eight and nine years old as we creep closer to the holiday season. John and I want to wish you and your family a very enjoyable holiday season. Yes, yes. Looking to throw, he's open. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. He got a big play to John, number 11. John Smith, Jr. Hey, John Smith broke loose. From the south side Seahawks. We'll look at it here. A nice pass. Yeah, just a good job right here. Number 18, Demetrius Harper, who's been all over the field, tackling, throwing, as you can see, blocking, showing his all-star skills. For number 25, 26, gives me, brings him down. Now that's what I'm talking about. Browns. Gaines Jr. Mm -hmm. Landry. Jarvis Landy, favorite player. Baker Makefield. <laughs> He's got it right. He's got it. Ooh, good move. Gilchrist. Did he get the corner? Got some of it. And he'll pick up right here at least, it looks like about six yards. Man, how much fun is it to watch this kid play? I, I, I remember in the in the championship game, Tim, he was running between the tackles. He must have made three people miss right in the hole. Right in the hole. Just an outstanding athlete. Got a bright future, young man. Look at that. Get it right here. Just faked him out. He can put his foot in the ground and change direction with the best of them in this age group. I tell you, a lot of high school coaches will be just trying to get him. His favorite player was John Saquon Barkley. Yeah, yeah. We talked about it earlier on. The, and they get, they're going with the hot hand. Going with the hot hand. Tried to hurdle like Saquon. You got it. <laughs> Although that line's giving him some holes to run through. You know, it's just a great rivalry between him and, and Letman. As they battled in the championship game, they're battling here in the all-star game. Once again, the offensive line doing the job. Big hole right there. He bounces it outside, outruns the defense for a while, and then tries to go airborne to get over the defender. Didn't quite make it. There's the ring. Scoot up, number 10. Tell number 10 to scoot up. So first down 10, 2.22 to go, and the rain has picked up. What is Cleveland weather without rain? Mm -mm -mm. How much pride is it, Tim, in the Mason Owens family here having both his sons playing in this game? for the American team. He's doing a great job. Good kids, both married role. Oh! They got tired of all that. Well, the defense made a statement right there, John. You can see it right here in your replay. Yeah, Darman getting great penetration here in Davis. If Thurman didn't get him, Davis would have got him. That's for sure. Well, I know one thing. I'm not part of the stat crew over here. Mr. Wise and Mr. Buffer will be selecting the outstanding defense and offensive players at the end of this game. We'll see if you can match them. I'll give you their numbers if you don't think they got it right. So <laughs> you can give them a call. Oh, uh, the parents will be writing it down. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Who picked that guy? Oh, good job, SK on balance. To the wow. outside. Now pick up a block. This kid is special. Mm. 
Who said you can't have fun in an all-star game? Wow, just a great job. Started off to the right side. Got his legs caught up by the would-be tackler, but was able to shake loose. Trying to see who this is. That has, oh, it's Redmond again. Good job getting his hands down. That Redmond is all over the place. You can see him to the outside here. Wow. He's run out of bounds by number 26. Young man, honor roll student. You are on the right track. Gaines Jr. Daddy and Mommy, you're doing a great job with him. Yes, you are. And you can pick up your DVD down at TV20 downtown. I know you want to see this over and over and over again. I'll tell you what, TV20, <laughs> they have been amazing. Over the years, they've been able to come out here and let these kids shine and show their skills. Our special thanks to all those folks in TV20 that make it possible. Starts with their general manager, Kathy Allen. They got Doug Phil, Henry Picturna. They got Eddie Malone. Yeah. Gotta they got Leah Haslich. Yeah. They got Pack. I tell you, Tiffany's in the office helping them. There's so many, I can't remember all of them, but I remember that uh, they all do a fantastic job giving us these great opportunities. John, you can go back and I can remember there's so many, so many people with memories. Yeah. And it all was part because someone made sure that Cleveland kids get an opportunity to shine right here on TV 20. And how about those throwback Thursdays, Tim? Oh, wow. Folks, if you don't know, there's throwback Thursdays on YouTube of uh, archive games from years gone by. Check it out. I'm afraid to look at him because they show I didn't have gray hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> Straight ahead, picks up a first down. Clock did move. Maybe it got stuck in one spot over there. Yeah, that's, uh, that DeAndre Taylor right there taking a direct snap, finding a hole, and just getting positive yards. And that's what they're going to have to do against this violent defensive line of the American team getting the penetration that they get. They're going to have to make it easier for the offensive linemen and just go with the quick hitters. Get big number 34 Sagos and his crew. Get them going. Gilchrist once again fighting, scratching, biting. Four guys it took to get him down. Man. Mm, mm, mm. Good job right there. Look at oh, these hits. Like Look at these hits. There's one. There's two. There's a whole host of the team. They got them. How many times you hear those coaches tell you, listen, whenever he goes, we got to help. Ain't one person going to bring him down. That definitely is the case. Although it was a nice block by Rashawn Craddock on that left guard spot. He threw a hell of a block. Yeah, look for Harper to get the ball here. Oh, his quarterback's going to keep it. He's getting positive. Out. Oh, keep blocking. There you go. Oh, and that half play time. is going to wow. end of the half. They had a heck of a drive going. They did, and that's the best way. They got a little confidence. They're going to try to get another playoff. No, nope, nope. that's it. That brings us to the half. You look at it right here, folks. This is Pee Wee All-Star action. Number eight from the National All-Stars taking us to the half with a nice run by Jonathan Hill from the CMHA Renegades. Folks, stay with us, because when we come back, we'll have some more Pee Wee All-Star action right here from Collinwood. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat. 
apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. You are looking at Collinwood Athletic Field. Again, it, we've been doing Pee Wee All-Star action here, not championship, as you can see. 7 nothing. We're just starting the second half. And, John, first half, pretty much what we expected. You know, yeah. as far as the kids, they, they haven't been doing bad for only a few practices. Yeah, I expected a little bit more scoring, but the defense has been playing very well. Both uh, front seven, front five guys are getting penetration and and making tackles, wrapping guys up, but it's hard to keep that, that Letman guy down. So Justin got away for one and scored a long touchdown. But I have to hand it to the National League team, uh, all-star team, Tim. They had the right formula to, uh, to limit Justin, and now just keep the football, sustain the drive. The only shortcoming was that they didn't come up with points. I'll tell you, some of the unsung heroes, I look down there, there's Danny Monroe on the field. He's got that gear on. The first thing he came when I came in today, he said to me, oh, we're in for football weather. <laughs> I want to look at him like, okay. <laughs> okay, we're back here. Start of the second half, first down, 10. The American. Oh, let me put it on the ground. Got to be an incomplete pass. He threw it forward. Yep, it was a forward lateral. Good He's, call by the referee. Our head linesman did a nice job. Bryant Reynolds immediately called that off. So you see the weather starting to play a factor right away here in the second half. See right here, quarterback for the Saints. He's running upfield, got his head upfield before he secured the football. But again, like Tim said, forward lateral, which is considered a pass, falls to the ground is incomplete. Our special thanks to all our sponsors. The All-Star Games, our main sponsor has been Boyd Watterson. Again, that's Tim Hyland, Patty Jamison. We'll catch up with them in the next couple weeks here. We'll sit down and talk to them about All-Star action and their support. As you look at TV20, City of Cleveland, Cleveland Browns, SB Blueprint, and again, all the volunteers that make it happen throughout the year. Our special thanks to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. John L. George is on that carry, that last carry. Didn't get much. It's going to bring up a big third down for the American All-Stars. So third down. And we're looking at 12, third and 12. That's going to be a quarterback keeper. No, he's going to pass it. Look to throw. Well covered. Oh, oh great catch. He went up and got it and brought it down. First wow. down. What a catch by number two, Elijah Gray from NEO Saints. It's an excellent job right here, tricking the defense a little bit. Elijah lined up at quarterback and then flexed out, went on a seam route right down the middle of the field, and he just out jumped three players, snatched the ball from him, and got some positive yards at that. Great concentration. Do what every, every good receiver do, high point the ball, go up with both hands, show strength in those hands too. You take a look at Elijah Gray right there. Uh oh. Uh oh. They can't wrap him up. We're looking at Lamir McKenzie, the ball carrier, and again on the tackle, Demetrius Harper. Yeah, Demetrius has been laying the wood all, all afternoon, carrying the ball as well. In the running for the MVP, they can pull this game out. And John McKenzie, he was the one that threw that last pass, threw it up there for him to go get it. Mm -hmm. Now you see a strong run by him. Some talented young people here. Keep an eye on the, on the, on the numbers, folks. Positions are going to change. 
quite often. Try to get everybody a chance to, to show their all-star abilities. Timeout. Offense. That is your first charge timeout. You well, have three folks, remaining. We want to let you know one of the best kept secrets in the city of Cleveland is that all Cleveland Recreation Centers are now serving free meals. Again, these are for any student in school. You must be a student in school. Again, student in school. And again, it's usually between 3.30 and 5, Monday through Friday, at all Cleveland Recreation Centers. Again, a great opportunity to go there, have a nice meal, do your study and get the homework, recreate and get into the basketball leagues or the volleyball or whatever they have going on. And there's a whole bunch going on because as we get close to the holidays, we'll be looking at the holiday play as well as we got a chance to see the cheerleaders in action just a couple weeks ago. And they were something to see over at East High. What did they put on a show for us? Yes, they did. A lot of talent, a lot of talent. So if you need more information on the free meals, pick up that number right now on your screen. It's 664-2307. That's 664-2307, and they can answer your questions. Full house backfield. Oh. Broke one tackle, another oh tackle, and he wow. got hit. Man, did he hit him. Number three was that was the, was the player on the tackle. Johnson from Broadway Academy, a fifth grader, Southside Seahawks. Looks like he got kicked in the shin, too. He's shaking it off. I see a flag on the play. Yep. I believe that's our first penalty, Tim. During the run, Holy, offense, number three, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down, third down. Correction, first down. You take a look at it right here, it's right there. Oh, yeah, see it the there, upper left, three. see it right there. He just holding on for dear life. Yeah, number three. Mm, mm -mm. Yeah, that's um, Johnson. On the hole, caught red-handed. To the Good outside. Block. Good speed. Nice tackle by number 10, Roderick Gilchrist. Good block by Letman. Mm. Good block. The rain continues. See Letman coming right here in his screen. Passes the one guy. Gets up to the next level right there. Number 20 also with a good block. Following his blockers, guys trying to work up field, giving Elijah a chance to make some positive yards. I'll tell you, you see a lot of families here. They got their umbrellas. They're out here supporting their kids. Man, do they go through a lot during the whole season. Yes, they do. Full house again. Faked it, trying to foul behind him, still on his feet. Wow, look Gonna at this Gonna try kid. to cut Go. back. Still fighting. Wow. Nobody wants to get him down. He's still going. Oh. Finally bring him down. Hmm. Super gray. He really put on a show right there, looking like Cam Newton. Sixth grader, 11 years old. See, so broke one tackle right there. Two. There's a guy on his back. Three, four, four guys on him. Fifth one jumps in there, makes sure he's down. He's not down yet. Wow. I can hear the coach in the film room saying, You got to tackle this guy low. You can't hit him up high. That ain't going to work. You might as well get that tackle to the whole defense of the American team. That was Elijah Gray, the ball carrier. For many old Saints, sixth leading scorer in the league. He's just stronger. That's all I mean. He's just stronger. Fast. Gonna run it. Gonna get to the outside. Oh. And that closed real quick. 
Looking at a fourth down now, right? Should be fourth down, John, and I think where they're spotted, maybe about six. Fourth yeah. down and six here. Yeah, a little, a little flushed out the pocket a little bit right there. Number 36, trying to put the pressure on and get a little too elusive for him. Leroy Cook. Now that's one time I think he should have stayed to the outside and used his speed. Mm -hmm. He might have been able to pick that up. So fourth down, we'll call it six. Yeah, I believe they got something special for him right here. Showing fourth and four, it might be closer to that now. Hand off right Oh, the ball's Humble. on the ground. Won't matter. Turnover on down. It's going the other way. Good job right there by the defensive lineman. Couldn't quite get Letman, but he got his hands on the ball. Right there as he turns him, number 14. Gets him turned around, and that ball gets on the ground. It's a good job by Julian Bynes, the third, the West Side Wolverines. That might have saved the game for the, for the national team right there. Now they can get, they can go out here and try to get a score. Well, they got plenty of time. We're in the third quarter with 2.22 to go. If they can put that drive together at the half, they showed the ability to move the football on the ground. Yes, they did. Take a look at Bynes and his crew right there. A little bit of a juggle in personnel, so everybody's got to be straight on what they're supposed to do. Got to be careful in these instances not to turn the football over. Who's playing quarterback? And they give it to the big play, man. And there he goes. Gilchrist to the outside. There he goes. He still will bring him down. There he goes. He finally steps out of bounds. And it looks like they're going to mark it right at the 45-yard line. But it's a first down for the National All-Stars. Yeah, good job right here. Uh, Gil Chris just picking his way through, trying to get away from that hostile defense of the Nationals, excuse me, the Americans. This kid just, just poetry in motion. Mm. Makes it look easy. Saquon Barkley like. We'll, re we'll remember this kid for a long, long time. Yeah, I can't wait. I, I really can't wait to see him play next year. Letman, um, Marquise Davis, he's another good one who's playing all over the place today, sacrificing, not carrying the ball today. Just an all around good teammate. There he is again. Right up the middle, first down. They are on the move. Yeah, they found something that the coaches like in that playbook. They found something that they like. Well, it can start with number 10. Again, Gilchrist, third leading scorer in the league. So he knows how to get to the end zone. Yes, he does. I will come back with, I think I will come back with Harper right here, give Gilchrist a break. Harper's a talented running back from the Wolverines as well. Again, he had a, a good championship game as they came up short against the Sims Raiders. That's what they do. They came back with Harper. Couldn't quite get away. Good job there by number two. Quarterback on the team. There he is all over the place. Elijah Gray. Making plays on defense, making plays on offense. Take a look at from Hillside, sixth grader. Honor roll, attendance, citizen, baseball, basketball, just all around good athlete. 
and a good student athlete as well. Second down. Step, step up. Right here. Step up. It looks like second up, down up, and up, eight. Up. Try to get to the outside here. They give it to the big fella. He is rumbling and stumbling and bumbling and almost has the first down. And they're saying he does. So first down, National All-Stars. Yeah, good job by Carson. Stroke fire. Stroke fire. Anton Gardina. Slavic Village Bears. Well, that brings us to the end of the third quarter. But the National All-Stars are on the move right here from Collinwood. And again, we want to send a special announcement to you right now, folks. The Pee Wee Coach of the Year in the Cleveland Muni Football League is Chris Parrish from the Sims Raiders. He'll be honored again in the future week here on Muni Football. But again, uh, Chris' team not only took it to the finals, but also it was a very special year as they recognized, you looked at their championship game where they recognized his grandfather, Sylvester Summerall. It's been one of those years where everything just fell in place and he had one great year. So we'll begin the fourth quarter. And again, the uh, next week, my, uh, my partner, John, and, and Jason Dunn will be here to do the midget game. And uh, they got some great stories they can tell. Yeah, I look forward to working with Jason. He's done a great job this year. And uh, I can't say that we're, we're sad to see it come to an end. <laughs> well, I know one thing. <laughs> I'm kind of warning Jason to keep an eye because the gray hair will be coming in quicker than he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. So, first down and 10. They got the clock on their side. They got field position. Now it's just a Oh, put the ball on the ground. The ball. Nothing but blue shirts around it. I don't see the signal yet, but it is. The American All-Stars recovered the ball here. Yeah, you got a new guy oh, back there at right quarterback. Yeah, got a new guy back there at quarterback. Salomon wasn't able to uh, corral it. It was a little bit of a low snap, but it's one that he got to be able to handle. And now they got to play some defense so they can get this ball back. They were in the perfect Perfect position to score to get this game tied up. And I know Salomon is not feeling real good about it, but hey, let's hustle on defense and get this ball back. It'll be okay. They can make that stop. We'll be in great shape. Yep. I already know who they got to stop. They got to stop number two, and they got to stop number 21. So now... The question is, can the defense in the National All-Stars and White be able to come up with a stop here? Yes, indeed. Again, the, uh, one of the things we want to express to you, the Pee Wee Division this year had 17 teams that were involved. Over 400 players participated. We all think about when they start back, usually it's in early, early July. This year they started a little bit earlier. And it's a lot of hours, a lot of volunteer hours that were put in. But John, it's been more than just the football field and maybe we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about some of the emphasis of the Muni Football League. Sure. And to the outside and a big, chunk of yardage and a, a strong run. He was brought down by number 13 from the National All-Stars. 
That was Davion Hughes from the Ken Johnson Wildcats. Yeah, the runner is Lemire McKenzie. You saw him in the championship game, quarterback of Sims Raiders. Ian Letman, that two-headed monster. Here you're looking at him. The young man from Sims Raiders, what a year he had. Handoff, 26 to the outside. Oh, good step on. He was good met, tackle. Again, Demetrius Harper on the tackle. Ball carrier was Johan Gaines Jr. from the Ohio Cardinals. That young man was your leading scorer yes. in the Pee Wee Division with 87 points this year. You look at him right here from behind. Mm -hmm. This young man led the league in scoring. And a nice tackle by number 18, Demetrius Harper. He's going to be in the backfield probably for the rest of the rest of the day, Tim. And that's a lot of pressure on this defense. Another, it's another talented weapon for the American All-Star team. You got Elijah Gray. Elijah Gray. On the carry. See right here. Watch the replay. Look like a missed assignment. He's trying to get a ball to, to number 33. Randall Henry of the Garden Valley Falcons, but like he had a little mental error right there. And the coach. Tim is. Tell you what, here, second down and 11. They need to make a stop here. Coming up on 5:15 to go here in the ball game. Clock runs. Full house backfield. They got Letman by the leg. And there and comes the rest the of them. They needed. Wow. So third down now. And I'm going to say it looks like third, at least 15. It's a good job right there by number five, Terry Eaton of the Westside Wolverines. It's just squaring up, getting a hold of a leg, and waiting for the rest of the troops to show up. And they showed up in a big way, number 38. Also coming in there to clean him up. Jan German, who's made some defensive plays here today. This is the biggest down right now of the day for the American team on offense and on defense for the Nationals. Got to stop him here in order to get, get out of this game. Get, get the ball back. Uh-oh. Looks like some other mix-up. Wow. Well, now it's fourth down. You're at midfield. So it's fourth and 10. They're going to go for it. It's here again. Another mix up. You see on the replay, you see Gray just trying to pick his, pick his way through the line, carrying that ball kind of dangerously. He got a whole host of nationals on him to bring him down right at the original line of scrimmage. So it's fourth down and 10. So right here, this is going to be pretty much where the, the National All-Stars can stop and be in the game. And he got in wow. there. And he might have got the quick jump, but no flag on the play. Yeah, no flag on the play. It's an excellent job anticipating the count. It looked to me like he was offsides, but the referees are the ones who count. So the National All-Stars get the stop they need. Yeah, he's offsides. Oh my. Yeah, he's 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 way offsides. Number 27, DeAndre Taylor, League Park Chargers. 
3.09 to go in the ball game. It appears the rains have let up and have stopped. You, you got to believe they're going to put it in Gilchrist's hands here. I would. Yeah, you got to. This is this is a time where coaching is the most valuable commodity that you have because now with just a limited amount of time in the game, you're trying to make sure everybody's playing. And some of these guys just might not be too familiar with what they're supposed to be doing out there. You know, John, with the, the game being the way it is, but we, we really need to talk about it's more than the game of football in Munich. Yes, it is, Tim. Football, again, like I mentioned earlier in the telecast, is the hook. Uh, we try to keep the kids off the streets. We try to get them around positive uh, uh, male role models, female uh, role models in the cheerleading uh, activities. And our volunteers do a great job. Uh, their work don't stop after football practice. They're dropping kids off at home. They're buying them food. Uh, they're going up to the school to help monitor their grades and their behaviors. And I will say thank you to all the teachers who reach out and call the coaches when you have an issue with the child so we can get it corrected quickly because we don't want to take the football away from them. Picks up a few yards here. But if they don't, if they don't perform well in the classroom, uh, folks, they, they cannot play. And it's called student athletes for a reason. As you take a look right here, the big guy running the football from CMHA number two. Keyshawn Williams been itching to get, touch the ball all game long. Oh, oh, ball's on the ground. Oh, the Americans have it. Turnover, turnover, turnover. Oh, my. Not what the doctor ordered. No, and that's what late late game substitutions bring. A little confusion. Great job by Davis. He brought wow. that up. They couldn't even get it in the pocket to give to him. Number 27. Excellent job by Davis. Looked like he got a really good jump. A really good jump on the on on the snap. And just disru just disrupted the exchange in the backfield. Wow. And Davis has had a great game. It's, it's tough to, it's, it's going to be tough to pick an MVP. I tell you, it is going to be really, really tough. We'll see if we can match up with you folks at home. See who you have. See how unbiased you can be. We got so many candidates. We got Harper, we got Gilchrist, we got German. Johnson. We got the Owens brothers. They've made some plays out here. Letman. This young man is coming on strong too. McKenzie. He picks up first down and about 10 more. A nice 20 yard run. Right here, just runs to daylight, gets outside, and just gets positive yards. Probably should have stayed in bounds to keep that clock from stopping, but he's going in the right direction. Davis has made plays out here, Marquise Davis. Gray. Of course, Latman with the only touchdown in the game. Randall Henry has made some plays. It's been an overall display of how much talent we have at this Pee Wee level. A little confusion here again with the late substitutions late in the game. Gotta watch the play card. 
Oh. Oh, that was close. That was close. They're saying that was a forward pass, John. Yeah, he was he was pretty even with the quarterback. It wasn't a pass backwards. You at home that. tell us. See right there, he's right there on the he's line. On the line. Right behind the line, and he's almost at the line. So, yeah. yep. It was definitely correct call by yeah. the official. It's a forward pass. But you got to look this in, young man. You got to look that ball in. It's number eight, Mason Owens, J. Mir, with the drop pass. Greg will line up at quarterback. Excuse me, Gray. Gray will line up at quarterback. He's trying to get his offense set up. Got to realize the play clock. Hands it right off. Got to protect the football here. The clock and controlling the ball is in their favor. This will be third down. Boy, this is going to come down to the last Two, play. Third down. It's definitely four down territory. They don't want to give him the ball back with much time left to go in the game, that's for sure. You need to call a timeout, and there's the timeout. So with 1.38 to go in the ball game, there is a timeout on the field. We'll take a break and we'll be back with some more of the conclusion of the All-Star Pee Wee game here from Collinwood. Become a professional American Red Cross certified lifeguard today. You must be at least 15 years of age. Be able to swim 500 yards nonstop. Retrieve a 10 pound weight from the bottom of a pool and pass a written test. Lifeguard training classes are signing up right now. For more information, call 664-3018. That's 664-3018. We're back at Collinwood Field. With the last minute and 38 seconds to go, the American League All-Stars have the ball. And there goes Gray again, going around the right side, and he's got some room. He's gonna cut back inside and throw up a couple blocks, and there's a fumble. And oh, the American Nationals picked up the football, and they'll have a chance to tie this game up. With 1.22 left to go in the game, I mentioned it earlier, that Gray was carrying that ball kind of loose. Trying to do a lot on that last play. Probably should have just went down and worked the clock, but he's a big play guy, and he knows how to make big plays. He's coming around the right side. See how he's, loose he's carrying that football? You got to keep it tucked. And that's a good job right here. But I believe it was number five for the Nationals. That would be Terry Eaton, who's made a couple plays here today. Take a look at it again right there. That doesn't make Gray feel good at all. It's a good job of hustling down the field by the American team, excuse me, the national team, and, try, and making a play to keep them in this ball game. Now, they got a long way to go. But they definitely had the weapons to get it there quickly. As you probably see a steady dose of the all-star running back, quarterback, Demetrius Harper and Roger Gilchrist. There he is again, number 27, Davis disrupting that blocking scheme. They gotta hurry up and get back in the huddle. Coming up on the one-minute mark, left to go in the ball game. 
They're trying to put it in Gilchrist's hands. I can understand why, John, but they're going to have to come up with a big play right here. Offensive line has got to block. It don't take too much for him to get to the house. 50 seconds, clock runs. He didn't get out of bounds. Clock keeps running. Thirty-five seconds left to go in the ball game. Can't get that close to the sidelines and not get out. And I believe that's their last time out of the game, Tim. So they're gonna need a big play. They might be able to get two. But again, this is where the limitations of only having four practices before a game like this comes into play. So hopefully they're talking about two plays right here. And I'm looking, John, and the rain has started back up again. Snaps, going to throw it. Oh, he has nowhere to go. Wow, they were on him so quick, so fast. Number 37, Damon Darman. Ran right into his arms and he plants him into the ground. Not much help there. They lined it up quick. This should be the last play right here, John, unless they can hit it big, and that's what they're going to need to oh. do. And that didn't happen. One last play. One last opportunity. Offensive line, that offensive line has got to block. So that is the last play of the ball game. Yep, that's it. Again, you are looking at the... Collinwood Athletic Complex, where you've been watching Pee Wee All-Star Action, where the American All-Stars, as you see, will walk away 7-0, but it's been much more than that. Yes, it has. And when we come back, we'll be down on the field, and we'll see who our stat crew pick as the outstanding offense and the defensive player for this ball game. We'll be right back. Hey, what an exciting Pee Wee Division All-Star Game between our National and American Conference. Uh, on my left, I got the National Conference head coach from the West Side Wolverines, Damian Johnson. On my right, we got the American League All-Star head coach, Danny Higgins, Glenville Elite Panthers. First, I'm going to talk with D. Coach D, how, how was practice this past week for you? Practice was crazy. Practice was crazy, but it was fun. It was fun. Okay. Um, looking, looking from top, it looked like everybody sent all tacklers. There was a lot of defense in this game. Uh, a 7-6 to six win uh, by the American squad. Uh, it all came down to one play. Uh, tell me what your thought process was when you dialed that play up. Well, I know we had a lot of speed, 
So I was telling my players, we're going to the outside. Take, take off. And that's what happened. He took off. And he scored 7-0. Okay, well, congratulations. So right now, I got a couple of specialty awards. And I'm going to start off with our defensive game MVP. And with eight tackles, three for loss, from the West Side Wolverines, Demetrius Harper. Here you go, Mr. Harper. Hey, the stars shine bright under the lights, and you definitely had a dominant defensive performance. Do you want to thank anybody? Yeah, I want to thank my coaches and my teammates. Even though I didn't play with them this year, but we had a fun, like we had fun days at practice, and I learned to work how to work with them. And I want to thank my mom. What a, what a good job, Demetrius. Now, on the offensive side from the American Conference, he started it off with a 65-yard touchdown pass, and he added another 50 yards on the ground from the Glenville, I'm sorry, from the Northeast Ohio Saints, number two, Elijah Gray. Congratulations, Elijah, a star among stars. You really went out there, put the team on your back. Uh, more importantly, you moved the chains and controlled the clock when needed. Do you like to thank anybody? Um, thanks my mom, my brother, my family, yeah, and my team. All right, thanks a lot, Elijah. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for our 2018 Pee Wee All-Star Game. And I'm going to toss it back up to you, Tim. Well, there you have it. As you can see, Jason Dunn, our league director, again, uh, handing out all their accolades. And John, you, you know, it finished, it finished just like it began with a, a great bunch of people that kids having a good time and this is what really it's all about yeah Tim these guys will remember this uh, this game for the rest of their lives uh, building new relationships with uh, new teammates and uh, hopefully they'll be playing against each other for a long time and we'll be able to sit back and enjoy their performances for a long time great job by both teams well folks you've been watching the peewee all-star game from Muni football right here at Collinwood Field. And again, our special thanks to all the coaches, the sponsors, the volunteers, and everybody that made it happen for the 2018 season. Before we leave, we do want to remind you that next week, John and Jason will be here for the Midget All-Stars right here from Collinwood Field. And again, we want to take a look at some of the faces and some of the great plays where they were part of the 2018 Pee Wee All-Star Game. So for Jason Dunn, John Good, Joe Record, I'm Tim Wells. Good night, everyone.
Thank <laughs> you.